Have you ever opted in or subscribed to someone's email or newsletter and every day you're getting an update from them via email? Well, in today's video, I want to share with you how you can create your own automated email sequence using MailerLite. So stay tuned. Welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, like I stated, I wanna share with you how you can create your own automated email sequence using MailerLite. But before I dive into the tutorial part of this and share my screen, I wanna share with you seven benefits of setting this up. Seven benefits of why you should create your own automated email sequence. Benefit number one is because it can leverage your time and your budget. You can set this up on autopilot and then you can save on advertising costs. I mean, you won't have to use Facebook or Google ads and spend money creating ads to generate leads. Once you do this right, once you set it up correctly, you can actually use your email list to save on your cost. Benefit number two is you can build credibility because Let's face it, people won't open up emails if they don't know who you are. But once you start nurturing your email list and once they start to get to know you, people are more inclined to open up your email because they recognize your name as opposed to receiving an email from someone that they never even heard of your name and don't know who they are or what they're about or anything like that. So that's benefit number two. Benefit number three is that you will have the opportunity to invite people to your ministry, uh, your, either your ministry or your business events and allow people to keep informed of your upcoming events, products, services, or special promotions. Benefit number four is it can help boost your traffic to your website or to your, post, your podcast. All you have to do is just include the URL of your new blog post or maybe your new podcast. Just put the link within your email and then that will boost traffic to your podcast as well as your web your website. Benefit number five is it will help to increase donations. If you have a nonprofit organization, you can enter, um, you can include a link to your nonprofit organization or explain to people, hey, you know, what your, what your donations will, will help benefit or whatever you're trying to promote or um, whatever cause you're trying to, to create. Explain it in your email and then send a link for people to donate. That's a great way to increase your donations for charities or for church events or the like. Benefit number six is you can add your own personal touch to your email. Instead of using like their templates that they give you, you can customize it and add your own little personality to it. You can send gifts or gifs, gifs, gifs. Uh, you can add your own brand colors to it. You know, if you have a certain color that you like to use, you can customize it to your liking. And the seventh and final benefit, there's many more, but I'm just gonna go over seven. The seventh benefit is you can use the reports. Most email automation systems will have a report where you can check the analytics for how your emails and your campaigns are doing. And this way you'll be able to see which ones are doing good, which ones are, aren't doing so good, and you'll be able to tweak it to your liking. They even have split testing. So you can have a picture for one and then a different picture for another, and then maybe you can change the, the headline to, to something else so that you can see which one is getting more attention and which one people are signing up to the most. And that way you can get rid of the one that's not doing good and then stick with the one that is doing very well. All right, so let's dive into this. Let me share my screen so we can uh, get started so I can show you how to create your own using MailerLite. Okay, so before you start using MailerLite, the automation system, um, in my previous video, I, I showed you how to create a landing page and we set up a subscriber group first. So, 
with all things, you have to set up a subscriber group first because that way, because everything has to be connected. It has to be connected in order for you to tell the system, where does this person need to go who subscribes to this forum or to this web, to this um, website forum or this landing page? So if you didn't watch my previous video, you need to watch the previous video on landing page to see how you can set up the group first. So um, I'm going to create a automation. So you see all the different tabs up top. There's dashboard, there's campaigns. Dashboard is basically where, you know, you can do different things on your account. Campaigns is if you want to do an email blast to everybody on your list. Subscribers, that's how you get to this right here. We're already on subscribers. You can do your groups here. You can set your fields, you can do your stats, clean up inactive subscribers, uh, forms. That's where you create forum sites. That's where you create different sites. But we are paying attention to the automation. This is where you are going to create your automation list. Other subscriber, email subscriber companies, it will say list. This one um, says automation. So we're gonna click that. And then we're gonna create a workflow. Again, you have to have your, your subscriber group formed first. So I already have that created because I did that in the first, my previous video on how to create a landing page. So you wanna click this orange button that says uh, <clears throat> create workflow. It will bring you to this screen and you will see it says set up workflow trigger. Now you want, the trigger is basically when someone signs up to your form, it's gonna trigger the system to, to where it sends that person. If you don't, you have to set it up so it will trigger what action to take them through. So we are going to, um, did I hit this? Yeah. So we're on this, we gotta name our workflow. So I'm just gonna use what I used on my previous video. And I'm gonna name this workflow fire with automation. The name of this is only for your internal reference. Um, your subscriber won't know the name of this particular workflow, okay? Now it says workflow trigger. Let me move my face again. <laughs> workflow trigger is um, select which trigger you want. So in this case, we're gonna use when a subscriber joins a group. Remember, we already created the group name, so I'm gonna create um, group. Now, once you select what the trigger was, which in this case, I use the, the group, you have to click the drop down box to pick the group that you, um, I'm sorry, not this one. Pick the subscriber group, the drop down button right here and select from the group name so that you can connect it to that. In this case, I am looking for the group that I created, the buyers list group. So I'm gonna collect, uh, select that one. And then under settings, it'll ask you, do you wanna repeat the workflow for subscribers who rejoin the same group? You can put yes or no, that's up to you. Um, that's totally up to you. Um, you know, do you want them to repeat the road workflow from subscriber when, who rejoined the same group? I don't know if you want them to go through the exact entire thing. I just left that unchecked. I mean, sometimes that may make sense depending on what your purpose is, but right now I'm just gonna leave that blank. Then you hit save. Okay, now it brings you back to, to your workflow, okay? Now, whenever you start a workflow, you're gonna click this plus sign. So when you click the plus sign, you're gonna be presented with different options, either create an email, create a delay, create a condition, or create an action. Right now, we're only gonna be concerned with these two right here, email and delay. Conditions and action, those are kind of like advanced methods and I don't wanna confuse you. Um, the conditions basically is um, 
you're telling the system, hey, if this person does not open up the first or second email, whatever email you're doing, working on, then I want them to go down this path. If they do open it, I want them to go down the other path. But we're not dealing with that today, okay? We're keeping it simple. So what do we want to do? We want to um, create an email. So if you create an email, um, they will receive an email right away once they enter in their email, their name and email. So we're going to click email. So once you click the email, now you want to define the email. So what you want to do is, um, see it says define. We want to um, click over on the right hand side. We're going to design. I'm sorry. First, we got to fill out this information at the top. If you don't know what, what to put in the box, it'll, there's a question mark right here and it'll tell you email. Email name is only for internal use. It will not be visible to your subscriber. So this is basically for your, your purpose only. So you can select whatever email you want. This one they will see because it is going to them. So your subject line would be, you can have them, um, you can use whatever option you want. I typically use their name to personalize it because their email will say, Hey Jackie or Hey John, depending on whatever your name is, the system will pull in their name if you set it up that way. All right. I mean, if you just gave them an option to enter their email, then the name would not be an option. So that's why I have the option of the name. If you only wanted them to enter their email, then you just select the email. So in this case, I'm just using the name because that's how I set it up. So who is it from? It's from me. And then um, the email that they will see when they get your email, this is the email right there. Now let's design the email. Now, um, before I do that, just real quick, Google Analytics, you can connect your Google Analytics to track how many clicks and things like that. Um, but email, I mean, I'll, Mel are right, they have do a pretty good job on showing you the statistics, the analytics on your, your subscriber list. So if you want to do more, you can do so. So let's design the email. Now, when you click design email, you will <clears throat> either use a template that you already made on your own which I did which makes it so much easy when you're start, when you start doing email automation or you can create a new one or you can go through the template gallery or use like recent emails so if you go to template gallery they have a whole <clears throat> list of beautiful templates that you can use for your benefit okay depending on what your purpose is find something that, that you like, and then you can tweak the colors and so forth in the pictures. But it helps your workflow really quickly because it's already pre-designed for you. And all you have to do is make a few little minor changes and tweaks. So basically I'm going to use my template that I created. So I'm going to go back to my template and uh, I'm going to hit select. Okay, so when you are editing your template, all you do is just, you can click this, whatever part you're trying to edit, you can click um, edit with this pencil button. If there's something in this block, you see these little gray lines? I'm inside, I'm hovering over this area. So I can click the pencil button right there. In any section in here, I can change. I can change this picture right here. I can change the text right here. Let me move myself away. 
you see? <clears throat> and, oh, quick tip. A quick tip, I'm sorry. Real quick. Quick tip, before you do your automation, before you start typing or, or you know, your, your first email sequence, I highly suggest that you open up a, take some time, maybe, I don't know, a half an hour, 15 minutes, open up a, a Word doc or a notepad and literally type out your entire sequence, <clears throat> you know, day one or email one, email two, that's how I do it. Email one, email two, email three, and I will type what the heading is for each one. <clears throat> And then um, the heading, and then the con the content, the body of your email. So you want to, for example, email one would be welcome, welcome, or thank you to subscribe to my newsletter, something like that. And then you can say a little bit about yourself and what you plan on doing, um, you know, sharing tips or sharing this or whatever your niche is talk about that but have everything ready to go before you start um setting up your email sequence because it makes the workflow go more, more smoothly and all you have to do is just copy and paste all right so just remember that so let me get back to the screen here so as i said once you <clears throat> you already have everything pre-written out you can go ahead and put your title right here I mean, you know, when you put your title, all you got to do is copy and paste it and put it here. Okay. You put like welcome or something like that. You can do a subtitle if you like. And then you copy, you paste your uh, copy and paste your first email. Right. We'll just say that's your introduction. Okay. And you can use this as a um, just almost like a word document in a sense you can fold it any portion of your text you can underline it you can italicize it you can add bullet point you can hyperlink it but like I have right here you can highlight that and put a link to it you can change the color of the text you can align it to the right left or center and things like that Okay. And what else? What else? And even you can add buttons. See where it has a button subscribe to. You can change the text to that, or you can say, you know, subscribe to my podcast. You can do how, set it up however you want. That's how you want to display your content, just do however you want. Once you're finished, you just hit save. Right? When you hit save, it'll come back to the main screen and uh, you can add other things if you'd like. And here's all your blocks over here. Now your blocks are things that you can add on anywhere on here. You can drag this if you want <clears throat> anywhere. You just click this little but icon right here and move it to wherever you want. You can add things. Let's just say, uh, so they even have a highlight video right here. If you want to add like an image gallery, they have different types of image galleries. There's this one, they have these two. They have all the different layouts. If you do, e-commerce you can add a picture of your clothes right to sell your products see i'm just gonna I'm playing around with this here i kind of like that so i think i'm going to use that <laughs> um you can do that as well and then you can edit that and swap that out with the image of your product but i'm going to delete that you can add a video which i, I did one time Click the drop down box to see, you know, what kind of blocks you want to add. So 
social and sharing, survey and quiz. There's all kinds of things that you can do. Look, here's the survey and quiz. And add a quiz, leave all your feedback, and you can change the colors of things. Like I want to change that to a different color. You just basically hit the settings. You see where it says button, you just click that and then change the color. You have to get the, you know, the number of the color that you want to use. You can change the color of the text. There's so much that you can do. Obviously there's must be rules for this uh, food feedback. Add a rule. I never used this for a survey, but um, I'm sure I will eventually. <laughs> But you can do all kinds of things. So I'm going to delete that because I don't have, um, I'm not using surveys right now. You can add a video. And you just edit that and then you put the URL of the video that you have, which is really good. I, th I have that on one of mine. Um, so I'm going to delete this because this is my main template that I use. So I'm not gonna make any changes, real changes. I'm just doing this as a tutorial for you. And then you just hit done editing. So we have our first email to go out. Now, this email will go out right away as soon as they enter their email. And what I like to do sometimes, I forgot to show you. Um, normally, once they enter their name and their email, they will receive whatever you promised to them if they signed up for your email. But as a backup, in this particular email, I will make sure I put, um, hey, if you didn't get your your download or a free copy of your ebook, here's the link, and then I'll put it in the very first email. So let's do another one. This time, I want the email to go out a day later. So you want to hit the delay this. Time. So click the delay, and then on the right hand side where it says wait you can do one day or two days or however many days right and you can even instead of days you can say i want this to go out in however many minutes from the first email or however many hours or weeks or months or a specific time of day or a specific time of the week or a specific date of the year or a specific day of the month a lot of options, right? I'm just gonna keep it at days and I'm just gonna say send the next email one day after my initial email, which would be from this date, from my original email. And then you hit save. Now you see it's telling you the next email is only gonna go out until one day after this email. So click the plus. Now you do your email and we repeat what we just did with the first one. Enter the email, your email name, subject's name, man, their, his or her name, from you or the name of your business and your email. That's what they will see right here, who it's from. Now let's edit. Okay, now just for GP, I'm going to just show you if you, you know, I'm, I'm assuming you don't have a template made. So let's just say we're going to, uh, let's create a template from here. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but it's just. a gift voucher. They don't have to be a gift voucher. You can use these templates and 
you know, if you like it, you can just change it to however you want to do it. Let's just see what this looks like. Oh, that's a long one. <laughs> no, I don't think I'm going to use that one. Uh, let's just create a new one. Let's go back to this tab to create new. So when you create new, you are presented with three options to use. You can either use the drag and drop editor, move myself off the way, rich text editor, or custom HTML editor, which as you can see is only on the paid plan. Um, so I typically use the drag and drop because it has the blocks and so forth. The, what I had just showed you with the blocks where you can drag over the video and so forth. The rich text editor, um, you can use that as well. So one thing, I know a lot of people don't like the, the drop and drag editor, but I have no problem with it. And the reason why some people don't like this one is because it's supposed to, like people that sign up, they may find it difficult to find your email if they, you know, some people don't know if they have Gmail, for example, they don't know to check their primary tab or their promotions tab, and then they have the social tab. So there's three different tabs. So your emails are either going to land in your primary or your promotions. And a lot of people don't know that, know that, so then they don't tend to see your emails. That's the only reason, but most people nowadays, they should know that. <laughs> hey, if it's a promotion, it's going to be in a promotion tab. If it's even, sometimes it's not a promotion, but it will land in a promotion as opposed to the primary tab. So anyway, we're just going to choose the um, drag and drop editor. So you basically can edit this whole thing, delete and add whatever you want. If you have a logo, you can add your logo right here just by hitting the edit pencil button and upload your own picture right here. I'm not adding a logo. This is, again, just quickly showing you how to automate your email list. You can do your title right here and you will type it on the right hand side. Well, let's just say, we'll just call this welcome. Welcome. Or let's just say, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for subscribing. Even right here, you can delete this or leave, you know, delete it, or you can edit this text right here. This is the subtitle. I'm just gonna leave that alone. Right here, you can um, edit the picture if you want, or you can leave it the way it is. <laughs> but how you edit the picture is you just click, don't click edit image. You have to actually click on the image. See, it's the exact same image as this. So you wanna click that image. Yeah, I have a lot of things to see. Anyway, and pick whatever image you want. You probably won't have anything in your gallery because if you're new to this, it'll be blank. So you have to click upload image right here where this orange button is. So I'm gonna X out of that. And then once you upload it, then you can just select it and it will pop up right here. All right, so you can do a call to action or you can change this button to you know sign up here or whatever your niche is or whatever your purpose you're trying to do you create it according to that you can like i said delete certain things you can delete this this all these things you can change one thing real quick i want to show you is this footer right here you can add footers from the blocks over here. See, you can do events and webinars, all kinds of different things. 
signature. You add your own signature at the bottom. Again, whatever you're searching for, just look under blocks. But to edit this, you can add your, your social links right here, which is pretty cool because you can drive traffic to your other um, social media URLs, your handles. So you can change all this right here. And how you change or add your social links down here in the corner is you click social links right here. And you just enter the URL of your Facebook or your Twitter or Instagram or whichever social account that you're trying to add. You can do Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube. I put my uh, YouTube channel link. You can do Vimeo, you can do Pinterest, Tumblr, your, even your blog, your WordPress, Snapchat, IMDB. <laughs> hey, that's an idea. Maybe I can put my IMDB. This is for people in the film industry and acting industry, because I do have some credit on IMDB. <laughs> anyway, I can uh, share that. You can do um, your link for SoundCloud, Vine, Slack, Spotify, Periscope. Periscope doesn't even exist anymore. I mean, it used to be owned by Twitter, but they no longer have um, Periscope. Anyway, they have all these different things. Telegram, uh, TikTok, all kind of things. You can have a link for your, your podcast, Reddit. Every, oh my gosh, they just have everything, okay? everything so that's how you do that and I think I showed you you can do um, videos did I say that yeah you can, you can add a video you can add a video wherever you want to put it See, you have a, tent, a little uh, placeholder for your whatever video you have, YouTube or on Vimeo, and how you edit that or bring that over is you just simply put the URL of your YouTube video or your Vimeo video, and then you put the little arrow and then hit save. But I don't want that on my template. Well, I mean, this is you know, this is just showing you how to do it. All right, so. That is how you create your automation, at least from a new template, creating your new. Oh, you know what? I forgot to show you something. Hold on, I'll go back. I have to show you how to turn that into a template. All right, we're gonna click this again. Edit. Okay, so in order to, let me move my face out the way. In order to make this a template, you basically go up to the actions and in a drop down arrow, you just hit save as template. I'm just gonna name this tutorial and I'm gonna hit save, okay? It says your template has been saved. All of your saved templates are stored in my templates and can be changed or updated at any time. So I'm gonna click continue editing. I'm gonna say done editing. Now we're gonna go back to our automation workflow. Okay, so let's do maybe one or two more. So let's make another one. We're gonna do it in another delay. Let's just say we're gonna wait two days after this email went out. Two days and then hit save. Now let's go ahead and create an email. And I'm going to show you where you can 
choose that template that we just saved or created. Choose your email, select name of the person who is from, this is from you, either the name of your company or you, your name and your email. Now let's design our email. You see? Now there's two templates, so I can either choose the one that we just created or this one. So because, let's just do this one real quick. here. No, I don't like that one. I'm going to add a text box only because this is a template that I showed you, you know, I just created. So you just edit this text and let's just say you had pre-made all of your emails for day one, two, and three. You just basically copy and paste it into here, right? You put something like, I hope you enjoyed free ebook. Anyway, you just hit save and then you're done editing. So you do this, I would just do like maybe a week's worth or um, two weeks worth. Hey, some people do a whole year's worth or several months worth, but who has time to do that? I don't know. <laughs> I've never done it. But what you can do, you can do that at least, you know, depending on what your purpose is, you have to have a purpose for your email list because that will set the tone for what's going to be in email one, two, or three. You know, you have to lead your subscriber down a path, whatever that path is for you in your business. So that's how you do that. Again, I would just start off with maybe, you know, a week's worth, like maybe every day or every other day. Um, however you want to do it. And then um, I'm not going to do a whole course. This is not a course I'm doing, but this is just basically to show you how to get started with the automation workflow for your business or your ministry. Okay, and for your ministry, you can say, hey, join me for, uh, you know, Bible teaching or your church service or what have you. And for your business, you can say, join me for Facebook Live training on XYZ. Whatever you're trying to do is what your email is going to be about. Okay, so you got to kind of like think ahead before, you have to think ahead before creating your sequence, your automation workflow. So it'll all make sense on what you're trying to achieve. So yeah, so that is how you create your own automated email sequence using MailerLite. I hope that this has been helpful. Now, look, you have no excuse not to collect leads for your business or your ministry because you can get it done for free for now starting off because with MailerLite, I mentioned in my previous video on the creating a landing page is you have up to a thousand subscribers before you get charged. So just starting off, I think that's an excellent amount to work with getting started. So just play around with it, you know, don't be afraid, just get out there and just do it. You have to do the work. I mean, we can pray all we want over our business, but if you're not putting in the work, you won't go anywhere. You know, 
God is not going to do the work for us. We got to put in the work. Faith without works is dead, right? We have to put the work in. So get the work, get to work, get to work. All right. So if there's any email service that you use, leave it in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. Um, I've tried them all. I've used them all. I've tried Aweber. I've tried MailerLite. I've tried Constant Contact. I mentioned all the ones I used in the previous video. So if you want to watch that previous video on how to create a landing page, then watch the video that's coming up. Okay. All right. Thanks for watching. Until next time, be blessed and stay healthy. Take care.